sir we are rolling and can we have your introduction please my name is rohit dhankar and at present i work as a professor uh, in azim premji university i also am a secretary founder secretary of digantar uh, which is a registered society and digantar was actually the school which i opened on nilbag model uh, immediately after training with david so that's what i do at the moment so uh, can you tell us about uh, how you got associated with nilbag and david hospital um i often think about it and i think there are three sets of people involved in that uh, i was uh, if i start with myself i was doing phd in mathematics in rajasthan university uh, my area i was still hadn't decided finally but i was between two philosophy of mathematics and mathematical logic yes so we was talking about how i got associated with nilbag and uh, as i said there were three sets of people involved i was doing phd in mathematics and still was undecided whether i should work in philosophy of mathematics or um, mathematical logic but to earn my livelihood i also used to write booklets for neoliterates at that time for rajasthan adult education association and translated certain articles so the director of that organization mr ramesh thanvi he knew me then there were there uh, uh, still is but there was a family there john and faith singh and they had two children at that time and they were not very happy about any of the schools so they contacted david sometime um, to send their children to nilbag they somehow came to know about him uh, david said that uh rather than sending your young children here and he didn't have a hostel facility also i do believe that uh, pedagogically also david didn't agree with the idea that children with before 13 14 uh, should live in hostel he thought that they should live in the family with the parents so he suggested to them that the kind of money you will be spending on your two children you can run a good school for about 20 to 25 children so i'll train your teacher and rest of the thing you know you fund it and therefore you can start a school your children will get good education as well as several other children of the neighborhood or who are needy can get education so these people were looking for a teacher uh, the first teacher they found was malayashri hasmi later on she i think she is still working in patel vidyalaya in uh, in delhi uh, she got a training for 2 years uh, but after that she thought that she will go more into the political activism and therefore they were again looking for a teacher so they came in contact with ramesh thanvi who was uh, director of rajasthan adult education association who knew me who he came to me and he said that would you like to start a school of this nature at that time my heart was more into the philosophy of mathematics and but i needed money and i was slightly tired of doing tuitions so i said that okay if the school is before 1 o'clock and then maybe i'll teach the children and after that i'll do my phd work so one worry would be over about you know looking for tuitions etc so that's how i came to to nilbag but once i came to nilbag looking at the school meeting david meeting these people uh, uma lakshmi amukta of course at that time she was senior to me so she was not there but occasionally when they came i met them and other people so overall i liked particularly the Mm, philosophy and pedagogy of the school and uh, also i came with a condition to my employers there that uh, if i like the place then i'll stay there otherwise in one month i'll come back so i liked the place i stayed went back opened a school and that school grew into an organization which is called digantar mm, so that's that's the story that's how i came my phd of course was left behind uh, i got much more interested in philosophy of education and curriculum 
um, particularly theory of knowledge behind curriculum and therefore I started working in, in a sense you can say I changed my field uh, from pure mathematics to um, rather applied philosophy and uh, that's how my association with Diganta came about. What surprised me in many ways was the freedom given to the children and their involvement. Uh, towards the training there were many smaller things. Now, let me give you one or two examples which make it. Uh, when I was reading this philosophy of education, in David's library I discovered uh, I was interested in philosophy from earlier as well and had a, read a little bit of Plato, Socratic dialogues particularly, uh, but I discovered the whole set of that Socratic dialogues there. So leaving my philosophy of education book, I started, I you know, deeply got involved in those Socratic dialogues. And uh, once when I said I didn't do my assignment of philosophy, but uh, you know, what, the boy, what were you doing? I said, I was reading something. What did you read in Plato? So we started our discussion on Plato. And he, he never actually told me that stop Plato and come back to. I understood that much later. Because the basic idea is not learning one book or I philosophical ideas, particular philosophical ideas. Basic issue is thinking philosophically about life and education. And if uh, one particular textbook takes you there, that's great. But if the student is interested, you know, much more coming to the same thing, uh, then, then that is equally good. So he allowed me that and I think that was quite an interesting thing. Later on I used it quite a lot with my students in primary. I used to have a very clear idea about the curriculum, what I want to teach them. And uh, usually they thought that I am making the timetable according to them. But actually they were walking the path which I had already decided. And uh, they, we used to work on that. So I can give you many examples of that maybe later on. But coming back to the training, Another thing in training which uh, uh, I do not know whether I exactly surprised but which uh, I liked a lot was the detail to which David used to give attention. Uh, if we are working in carpentry then the quality and how good it should be. If we are doing something in pottery or we are doing something in needlework all these things were compulsory. So we are doing something, then that, that also I liked very much. A rigor uh, in the training also I liked, you know, whatever we were doing. Uh, later on when he gave me teaching job, teaching work with three, three children, then he gave me a new set of equipment which I had never seen. And he said that you have to teach them mathematics. Now these three children didn't know my language, I didn't know their language. Now, we could understand numbers, but they knew very little of numbers. So I think that helped me a lot in first trying to understand the child's mind. Then the, since I was a student of mathematics, so that part was very clear in my mind and I was also studying philosophy of mathematics. So what numbers are, how they, their, their epistemological mooring were very clear to me. But connection with the child psychology and epistemic idea of knowledge uh, that spontaneously through that equipment, Kujanai roads. Uh, so his, his way of giving these small tasks and working on them that I liked very much. What, again, since your question was about surprise, uh, I was very surprised from the kind of uh, background I was coming that he sometimes used to invite us for dinner and drinks. And a teacher inviting you for drinks, I do not know whether you want to that, keep that in your uh, documentary or not, but I would be very happy if you do. Uh, and we had great conversations around that. So I still remember that this was not, I, drinking was the minor part. The real thing is what we were reading, what do we think about education. We used to get into debates on our assignments and several things. So, I, in my life I remember two conversations very clearly. One with David, 
around this drink. We used to have in Jaipur a meeting with a very famous philosopher, Professor Dayakrishnan, every, uh, every Wednesday. And in the afternoon from around um, 3 to 5. So they were very rich kind of uh, discussions. So these two, uh, David's conversations around the drink in the evening, evening and uh, Professor Dayakrishnan's conversation uh, in this regular meeting. I think they, they shaped my mind a lot about how to think about the world, about human life, about people, about moral values, relationships, meaning of words, etc. Um, other things I understood in the training was that um, I didn't have much interaction. I, I used to be a good tuition teacher, but that was teacher and one child kind of situation. I didn't have interaction with children. You know, the experience of playing with them, joking with them. So, you know, this Uma, Alivelu, Lakshmi, all these people, we used to play a lot. And that gave, built a kind of relationship, which I took some time to understand why this activity is important for a teacher, building relationships and all that. So that's how the training goes. Uh, I still feel, I said earlier also, but his idea of reading really good material, direct experience, and analyzing that experience, reflection on that, in the light of your earlier belief system plus what you have read. I think this, this combination of these activities was uh, basically belief changing. You see, real problem in training is that people talk and learn the terminology, but the belief systems don't change. So I believe his, this mix of things uh, was quite potent in, in changing belief systems in that sense. So looking at a range, his intellectual artistic talents, he sang very well in spite of smoking and very, very bad voice, I believe. Uh, but beautifully he sang. Then his understanding of theatre, uh, various kinds of other writing, understanding of literature, uh, his moral values, his commitment to people and their well-being. So looking at all that, I find him actually uh, admirable. One should emulate actually David. He was a very good human being. You see, by the time those books were transferred to Ajim Premji University, and I was part of that, I went there to look at those books and um, uh, how to pack them and when they came here. So I was part of that process. By the time we reached David Libr's library, it was, uh, in a certain sense, uh, how to put it, uh, twice sorted out. Okay. Once when Nicky Davidson went to Engl England, at that time perhaps some key books he took with him or gave to maybe uh, Rishi Valley or something. Okay. Then when Rishi Valley was working there, so I am 100% sure because many of the books I didn't see there. So many of the, of the books perhaps they took. And the third, then when uh, this uh, Mm. Uh, what's the name of the organization which is what? Ashray. So, uh, when Ashray felt that there is not enough space and they want to buy new books, then they transferred those books to, to so this was not David's original intact collection. Oh, okay, okay. These were the books which uh, perhaps most of these people didn't want. But still, it is a very rich collection and uh, I was very happy to uh, see the books which from which I read actually there. So, so yeah. any idea about number of books that Ajim Benji had? I have the exact number because the but I don't remember it. I can pass it on to you uh, because the person who um, I was just an associate in that because he took me because I had you know relationship with yeah, with, yeah. with Neil Park. But the person who actually handled this whole, whole operation. Uh, he is a colleague of mine and close friend, so I'll ask him what the exact number is. There is a separate David Osborough collection in two or three um, uh, self, selves there. Okay. Yeah. David wanted us to run uh, schools 
you know exactly uh, how to put it imitating his school I interpreted it always but maybe that's because of my own understanding and earlier experiences my interest in philosophy that uh, what he was up, up to was basically understanding the human life society philosophy philosophy of education and pedagogy mm -hmm. and then depending on the context uh, using those principles without dilution but the structures of the school and actual functioning might be very different so but uh, most of the people when i started the ganthar you said that before also on four and months. particularly when it actually expanded to 300 children mm -hmm. then most of my guru bhai and guru bhagini is actually in a way didn't like it mm -hmm. in the mind it was always like small less numbers small is beautiful yeah okay, okay. Mm. Got it. i i do agree small is beautiful i don't think beauty is the greatest ideal in human life mm -hmm. i believe justice and truth are so something is more just and true but not beautiful i am happy to live with that uh, i don't remember david ever bothering about upscaling or larger impact uh, but you know saying uh, in in words and trying to egg us on is one aspect but his involvement in education for example he was writing books uh, he was part of uh, this uh, D.P. Chattopadhyay Commission on Teachers. Uh, he trained teachers from Bhutan, wrote books for them, trained teachers from Kashmir, wrote books for them, and he was writing books which were being used throughout India. Therefore, his actions actually speak that uh, a right kind of pedagogy, not necessarily with the brand name of Neil Bagh model, should permit in the education system. That's how I understood it. Uh, particularly, he never, I don't remember ever any conversation that we should upscale, etc. But when I went to, uh, I'll give two, two three examples. Uh, when I went to Jaipur and I started a school, uh, I faced lots of questions. Uh, school, you know, caught people's eye and they asked, you know, why do you run this kind of school? And therefore, we started, you know, uh, thinking about it, reading more and all that. And uh, later on, we needed funding. And funding for a small school were impossible. So we have to take on teacher training um, for some other schools. And then we had to open more schools. So it started expanding. And when these, these activities got... Uh, um, uh, you know, caught, caught eye or were known to certain people, then participating at the national level in seminars and curriculum development, textbook development, um, teacher education curriculum, etc. Uh, so, in a certain sense, those ideas, though not exactly as they should be, uh, were woven into this thing. If someone reads very carefully the uh, right to education act and ncf 2005 and the kind of school they imagine then when it comes very clearly across it uh, that actually the uh, this division into grades is not a great idea and it it should be flexible or even dismantled uh, the idea of continuous and comprehensive assessment uh, without its name this was central thing in uh, Neville Bagh school and uh, in, in our school Diganthar, in Malati's school and any other school which were you know, Sumavanam, uh, which were working on Neil Bagh model. So those ideas actually got a kind of official recognition through these documents slowly. I am not saying that those ideas wouldn't have come from other sources. But actually, a few schools, people see running on those ideas that gives them courage to accept and write it. So from that point of view, I'd think that many of David's ideas uh, were appreciated and got into the policy level. Maybe not exactly in the same manner, maybe not as, as bold as David wanted them, but influenced this thing. Uh, now, 
as I said that Diganta did lots of teacher trainings of this nature. Amurta did a lot of work with teachers and in, in South India, in Tamil Nadu actually, in material development and um, teacher training etc. Uh, at one time, I do not know whether they are working now or not, Narsiman and Usha uh, worked with the uh, this Karnataka government and perhaps more than one government on you know, pedagogy in the schools etc. So it seems to me that the, it's not that there are thousands of Nilba kind of schools were opened but if you distill out insights from that in terms of philosophy, pedagogy, basic ideas and school structure, teacher-child relationship then that got a very very uh, very good reception uh, in Indian educational literature and discourse and even up to a certain extent uh, in policy and that came because people came here people like me, Malati, um, they, they came here to study education as such how education should be done and they, they already, most of them already had decided. I was somewhat undecided and it, I took one or two years. But most of them had already decided that this is going to be, uh, you know, their, their, what you call it, calling or occupation uh, in the life. So, influencing such people and then they go out in the world to work on that, that, that does get those ideas permitted in the main system. So, it seems that it had a lot of impact. We, David's impact is more than we actually know. So, research needs to be done on that.